באמת, דוד, you with us? דוד בלי עין הרע, פטריוט. פייחה לי. So what number we left off on, David? Three. Number three, which page? Three. Ten. Four. Four, okay. Read. Is returning the Rezunza comparable to the prohibition of separating challah and Shabbat? And we said it's not comparable because the challah is forbidden until the separation. Very good. It doesn't matter Israel or outside Israel. Challah, Moshe Kushet outside Israel. Please, Afrashat Challah. No. Shabbat is not. Afrashat Chala, you didn't do it. You forgot. Can you do Afrashat Chala on Shabbat? No. No. In Israel or outside Israel, the same? The same or no? No. Outside Israel is not the same. Outside Israel is not the same. You can eat. Hold one piece. After Shabbat, you separate that piece from it and you're good. Now, if you want to do the new challah, you want to do everything on Shabbat. Munki on it. New challah, you baked before Shabbat. You forgot to do a prashat challah, on Shabbat came in. Can you do a prashat challah on Shabbat outside Israel? Queens. Yes. A prashat challah, Moshe is there? No. Very good. Very good. What if you're in Can I eat it meanwhile or no? Yes. Good. Outside Israel, you can eat it. Clear? Israel, inside the Israel. In Israel, no. Very good. Continue next. What if you are in Elat? Yeah. Is, is returning the mezuzah comparable to house doors that were disassembled on Shabbat that are Mozart? Yeah, that's, that's number five. Yeah. Okay? So if the door, what we said, the door of a closet came out, is the door of the closet Mozart or no? Huh? No, it's not Mokhtar. Not Mokhtar. Mayor, why not? Tell us very good, Mayor. Call a kavod. Why not? It's not a Mokhtar. Huh? What are you going to say? Tell us. Davi, tell us. It retains the status of the item that it held. Very good. That's a lawyer statement, you see? The closet. It retains the status of a closet. The closet is Mokhtar. No. No? So, to any pieces of the closet, is closet, closet closet you cannot put it back on the Shabbat, but after the Shabbat you could. But closet doesn't move, so how does it? How no, no. I'm, 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 when I when I say closet, I looked on this teva. Ah, this. Uh, yeah. So it's something movable. Now, what if it is attached to the ground, like the door of the house or the room? Real? This closet door. Or this closet? Bro, I don't know if it, they nailed it, if it's movable or not. Uh, no. uh, it's not movable because it's heavy. <laughs> But oh, is it movable because they, they drilled it in? No, they drilled it in. They drilled it okay. If they drilled it in, so then it's part of the, the house, part of the wall. So that door, it will be mukta, exactly. Can we say also? This door, mukta. That door of the uh, bima, it's not mukta. What's the difference? Why, it's also drilled. Ah, it's not drilled into the house. Because it's movable. It's a cold keli. Can we say also um, something that requires 10 men? Is also it's not, we said, even if it's, it required 10 men to push it, it's not Mukti. Afu. Very good. Huh? Kora, yeah. Kora. Very good. Number five, uh, finish. Oh, so now, the mezuzah fail. Is the mezuzah comparable to the door that fell? The door fell on Shabbat, the door is Mukti. You cannot uh, move that door, right? Unless there is danger to the public, etc. But generally speaking, it's Mukti. Uh, what about the mezuzah? Mezuzah that fell on Shabbat is mukta or no? no. Says Alakha. Read David. It's allowed to move this mezuzah that fell on Shabbat because it's not comparable to the house doors that detached on Shabbat. The door is being nullified to the house and therefore the walls of building and destroyed are applicable. However, a mezuzah has a very high importance and holiness. Therefore, it's not nullified to the house. Thus, it's allowed to be moved. Got it? Now ask the question now. I was talking about moving, not oh, so you can learn from it. We can learn from oh, so we can learn from it. But even according to the Mata says you cannot learn from it, or learning from it doesn't help it. It's still moved. So let's say it's still another reason to allow it. It's not comparable because it's not comparable to the door. Ronnie, what's the reason? The door that failed, it's part of the house. So it doesn't have significance in comparison to the house. The house is more important. What's more important, the door of the house or the house? House. However, mezuzah, it's his own insignificance. It's the mitzvah of Hashem. 
the house you don't do mitzvah of Hashem. The mezuzah you do mitzvah of Hashem. So the mitzvah of Hashem is, since it gives significance to it, it doesn't get the laws of nullification. Now I'm sure not. I should not say that I'm sure, but I'm assuming that few people doesn't understand what I'm talking about. The laws of nullification is. Do you know? I'll give you an example. Right now, I have let's say a feather here. Here. You know those people that go like this? I have a feather here. <laughs> can I can I on Shabbat take that feather and move it out of my jacket? No. A feather has a purpose? No. So if he has no purpose, what it should have been made, what level mukte? Muktzeh Muhammad Gufo, which is the highest level of Muktzeh. We're going to learn it later on, the details of it. If so, question. If I have it on my suit, am I allowed to remove this uh, feather by Shabbat? Is it the same as the Shinu? No, not Shinu. No, I ah, take it, pick it, it wow. as is, usual way, regular way, and I want to move it out. If I would have that, that uh, feather, I would have it on the floor. I would have it just on the street. Am I allowed to pick up this feather? from the street and move it around or if I have it on the plate can I play with the feather on Shabbat no. Huh? No, purpose no purpose for that not allowed if that's not allowed oh Liran John Shalom Aleichem Sadiq Hayyai Liran Amir. Iran. No, Iran. If so, a person want to move a feather around. Feather, is it considered to be mukte or no? Yes. yes. If you have it on the jacket, can you remove it regularly and put it away or no? So the yes. Why not? Uh, why, why yes? It's a mukta to just get to the There's a purpose why you're doing it. Huh? So what? If you're I have a purpose right now, I have a feather, I have a feather on my book. Can I move the feather? Because purpose, I want to see what's written underneath the feather. Yes. Yeah. Not allowed. You have to do like this. You have to do Bishinui. Why? The feather has nothing to do with that book. It, it's uh, casually just fell here. It's not part of it. However, whenever the feather is on my jacket, anywhere I'm gonna go, this feather is coming with me. Since this feather is going with me to every place I'm going, it's part of the garment. So garment is mukse? Is garment mukse? No. If the garment is not mukse, whatever is part of the garment, also not mukse. So this concept called in Alakha, secondary to the thing. I give another example. You right now have bread. In Israel, they put stickers of the angel of the company, that the bakery company, put sticker on the bread. On the bread? Yeah. Not on the bag. It's on, a, on the bread only itself. American style. And uh, you have a bag and have ingredients. In Israel, like it's apple. in yeah, fruit. Like an apple. Like you have an apple, yeah. yeah. In America, they put it on the apples. And it's also on the apples, also on the bread. Paper? Sticker. Sticker. After it's baked, some before, some yeah, after. Yeah. Depends how much how much garbage they want to put inside your food. No, obviously not. Yeah, you gotta feed the doctor somehow. You gotta put one aside for everybody. Yes, 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 hundred percent. It's sticker over there all the time. It's 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 there. Now, question to you: This sticker has any purpose? Yeah. After it comes out of the bread, out of the bread, can you use it for something? Are you planning to use it for something? No. So, what's the question? so whenever you pick up the bread right now on Shabbat, how do you move the, the bread? He has a on top of it. So you should take it off. Huh? Take off the sticker. You're not gonna say. I didn't take it off before Shabbat. The majority is the bread. Even on Shabbat, take it off. Do I have? If I take it off, I'm gonna break the completeness of it. Part of the bread, so it's not. It's not gonna. No, no, it's not. It's, it's when they bake it, it's there. Usually, when you take it, you take with some of the crust. Yeah, the yeah. Bread. You so break part, part of the part bread. Of the bread. Is, not is it makes the bread mukte? No, no. No. Why? What, who came to serve who? Avraham. The bread came to serve the sticker, or the sticker came to serve the bread? The sticker came to serve the bread. This, this, the, bre the sticker tells you where is that bread coming from. So the, the bread doesn't tell you where the sticker came from. From India or from China? It doesn't tell you this. 
where they made that sticker, printed it, right? The other way around it works, that the sticker tells you about the bread. So it comes out that the sticker is meant to serve the bread. Therefore, the concept of importance is the bread. Secondary is the sticker. Importance is my jacket. Secondary is the feather. Importance is my house. Secondary is the door. But if lo alenu lo alechem, the house is, goes on fire. Lo alenu. Are you allowed to save the house? No life threatening. Nobody's gonna die. It's not in Queens. It's in Gedor Lahat, Long Island, at the end of it. Exit 25. I don't know which exit there is. 72. 72. Tam. At the end of the world, we turn left. One house over there, no people around. It goes on fire on Shabbat. Go Can you fire. turn off the fire to save the house? No. no. Can you turn off the fire to save the mezuzah of the house? No. Are you serious? Says yes. Wow. Rabbi, I have five million dollars illegal money. Don't tell anybody. Inside cash. Can I do so? I don't know, a kapot, maybe something to turn off the water, the fire. Five million dollar cash under the mattress, the entire house, brand new renovation. You cannot turn off the water if there is no life threatening. But if there is mezuzah that you have to save, I'm saying. Turn off the fire because of the mezuzah. Huh? Every case. What? Every case. Yeah, what do you mean every? I don't understand. No, you, every you case. So if you have a sidur, let's say. Sidur, yeah. Sidur, mezuzah. By yourself? But sidur has the same. Yeah. You do it by yourself. You know, that's <laughs> that's what the makhlukit, Rabbi Yerushal Ben Babli. Rabbi Shimon said, it's allowed. No, allowed. What allowed? By a goy, by a yehudi. It was debate. By a goy, 100% allowed. By a yehudi, it's makhlukit. There is a way to explain the Gai Rushalmi that even by Yehudi it's allowed. Because it's Marachash Lotz Chalikufa to turn off the fire. It's the Rabbanan. For sake of the Kavod of the Mezuzah, Kavod of the Tfilin, Kavod of the Sidu, Hachamim it allowed also? it. Yeah, it's also holy. It's not an apartment. Yeah, so you pray for that. If it's a pray, Sidu that nobody prayed with, then it's not holy. But still, people prayed with, it's also holy. So now, can throw it to the garbage. That's Sidu. No, there's some sort of holiness. So what do we see? What's more important, your house or your mezuzah of the house? Uh, so tell me, Bechor John, $1.5 million, na house or nada, at the door renovation. I have $2 million. When it comes to the mezuzah, Rabbi, kasher. Why $2 million on the house you put? This is bricks, not even bricks, forget about this. Papers that painted. A parchment with Hashem's name as Uzzah, you will look for the cheapest way out. This is, this is a shame, Rabotai. A person makes sure to renew his insurance of the house every, I don't know, the term, one year, two years, three years, I don't know the timing. You tell him, you have to check your mezuzot. No, Rabbi, I bought it from a good place. <laughs> <laughs> to renew your insurance on the house, you make sure to do. They will renew the real insurance with your mezuzah. Nah. Okay, next time. Rabbi Milubavich used to tell to all of his Hasidim every year, Chabad people, every year, check, check all of their mezuzot and all of the tefillin. Rashi Rabbenuta. All of them. They have 10 kids, 10 kids watch it, tefillin, mezuzot, everything. Every year. When people used to come to Rabbi Milubavich with problems, he used to first thing you used to tell them, check your tefillin, mezuzot. All the time, there's videos of it. All the time, your tefillin, mezuzot, your tefillin, mezuzot. So when you tell people during the day, the mezuzah is supposed to be placed at the beginning of the upper third. You have mezuzah 90 inch door. It's supposed to be placed on the 60 inches. If it's 75 inch door, this is a tall door. But if you have a smaller door, where the mezuzah is gonna go? 50. 50 inches. It's below your shoulder level. People say, Rabbi, Tuniski, it's no, too low. John the day, there is Shulchan Aruch, or there is your preference. Shulchan Aruch says the beginning of the upper third. This is your protection of the house. That, uh, check around, go around our neighborhood over here. Where's the mezuzah location is? Go, go around our neighborhood and see. The people that put it, they put it the right way or the wrong way? No. 
it's still kosher the book. More than half a third. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. But the remember, re remember, Kia also drives, but you drive Mizaradi, Habibi, Mazarakti. <laughs> so, in case you drive Mercedes, you drive the most Habibi pleasurable cars. You don't say, Rabbi, he also drives. You take top quality BMWs, Mercedes. Rabbi, that five million dollars, can you like kick it like out of the house, like with your foot? Yeah, yeah. Pull it with your foot, something like that. Probably, probably, probably makes more shinoi, but shinoi, mukta, but shinoi. But the point is that the mezuzah, you'll turn off the fire. Uh, for the house, so to argue, what can I do? The height of the mezuzah, if you're staying somewhere, you're renting, you don't have the obligation to do it. Should you do it? Why not? Change the height? Yeah, yeah. Should yeah, Ben Ishchai writes it. Ben Ishchai says it's mandatory. Rabbi says it's not mandatory, but it's good to. Ben Ishchai says it's mandatory to change it. Even though it's somebody else's. You're renting it, it's yours. It. It's not somebody else's. No, it means like for three days, two days. Oh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, for 30 days, two months, you're renting it. Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah, it's minimum color. color. We're renting for two weeks. Uh, no, two weeks in Albuquerque. 30 days, right? Oh, uh, no, you know, no obligation. 30 days. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Outside Israel. Israel. Outside Israel, more than 30 days. Change it to the right height. Right. Yeah. Okay? Probably we also recommend to check it. <laughs> because probably that previous owner was not so particular about this. Ah, it's a rental place. Can you bring your own? Huh? Can you bring your own? Why not? Take it back. Yeah. Mike, take it back. Put the other one back. Yeah. Next. So now you understood uh, how I emphasize it to you that Hola, cabot. Im titol taparim ani gavicha neshika. If you told it up at him, I'm going to be like Okay, next. So, bottom line, the door fell on Shabbat of the house. Mukse or no? Yes. The door fell of the teva, of the movable box, whatever. No. Mukse or no? No. No. The mezuzah fell from the house. Mukse or no? No. no. Is this clear? But you said the door of the house is secondary to the house. So how right. can it move the... Uh, what's his name? Nissan. 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 Tomorrow we're going to have shiur of children. kids' education. So come tomorrow. It's important to you. Make your schedule. Ah, no, so but Wednesday. I made it confusing. I'm so leaving. Order, I'm leaving in the wrong time. In order for it not to be moved, it has to be... Wednesday we're going to have it. Secondary and also movable. So two conditions. Jotska, say again. In order for it not to be mukse, it has to be two conditions: movable and also secondary. What the the what, the closet so, door? door? Anything. Ah, you mean the the feather thing? No, the main thing door. is movable. And Anything that is not mukse has to be two conditions: and movable and also not secondary. If it's to that secondary, thing. you said that it's 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 kosher. What yeah. second? Secondary what? The bread is kosher. The sticker is secondary to the movable? bread. No, the bread is edible. You can eat the bread. That's why it's not mukse. So that's so. So I'm saying. So in order for something not to be mukse, you need two conditions. It has to be movable and also has to be secondary to the main thing. Right. But then I have a question. No, but then if it's, the sticker is outside of it, you cannot move the sticker. Yeah, I cannot say the sticker is part of the bread anymore. It's not part of the bread anymore. So it's not secondary. Anymore. Yeah. It's already out. So it's so what's your question about the sticker again? So anything to be not mukse, you need two conditions. It has to be movable and also it has to be secondary. No, you cannot say that. Right. If I have a money right now, it's just uh, not, yeah, not. but money is not secondary to anything. Oh, if I stick it to the bread, the it doesn't make it not mukse right now. Money is mukse. Sticker is mukse. So how is the? Can I move the bread that has the sticker on it? Yes, because secondary. Because secondary. Yeah, but what about the door? The question now. The door is mukse. But it's secondary. It's second, no, true, but it, it's second to the house. Okay. The house is not movable. So, so that's what he's saying. It has oh. to be in two conditions. It has to be movable and secondary. Okay, yeah. But then it doesn't turn the sticker not mukse. The sticker is mukse. You just because secondary, you can move the bread. The, the feather is mukse. Just because secondary to my jacket, I'm allowed to remove it from my jacket. If you remove, after you remove it, the sticker it is mukse. Right. Yes, mukse. That's the point. Yeah, because once you remove it, it's he not didn't make conversion to him. Anymore. Anymore. Give you. So there's no rules with it. Yeah, right? There's, there's no giant rules with it. Even when it's not there attached is. to it. Yeah. So it's, it's not Allowed a item that has something 
with it okay. that it's secondary to that allowed item, the allowed item remains allowed. Sure. Yeah. The allowed item. But the secondary? Secondary but remains forbidden, secondary. but it doesn't bother you from moving the allowed item. Is this clear? I think the confusion is with the fact that the door is, uh, even if it was secondary, vessel, it's out, now it's outside of it, it's still movable. You're allowed to move it. Oh, but the sticker, if it was part of the bread. You're talking about which door, or which door? The door of the, the closet, tera, that movable tera, closet. Right, of the tera, True. So it's not the door movable. The, the door can come back to the closet. The sticker is going to the garbage. Right. There's no purpose. Yeah, but this door can also come back to the garbage. Huh? But it has to be moved. Right. Why? Because you can put it back. So the reason is because the door, you can put it back. Nahon. That's why it's allowed even if it's broken outside of it. The word, you, you, you're getting confused with different terms. The, the right term is, it was a clee or no? That's the question. Something that is attached to the ground is not a clee. Does, does not get the, the name vessel. Object, I don't know how you want to call it. It's part of, a house is an object? No. The door of the house, it's not an object. The teva is an object? Yes. The door of the teva is an object. But it's not usable anymore. It's not usable currently. Right. Uh, but it will be usable. Even though, you, are you allowed to put it back on Shabbat? No. So why, uh, why can't we say because you cannot use it now? It didn't lose the, the name, the title, this passport didn't change. He has passport still called object. He no didn't lose the status of it. How far do we say that? Do we say if the door is broken completely? It no, be it's not going to be reusable. Right. So Got why it? Can't, why can't you put it? Hold on. on. He was uh, for holding. Mezuzah for now. Mezuzah case or mezuzah no. scroll? Mezuzah. Scroll. Yeah, come out. You put it back. You can screw it or no? No. How do you hold it on the thing? Put something. Don't put the screw. Something what? Napkin, shpapkin, chotas That's, that's ah. on Shabbat or that's in general? It's on Shabbat. On Shabbat. Anyway, you put it huh? Anyway. Yeah, right. Anyway. But this any that thing that you put is temporary. After Shabbat, you're going to take it out. The screw you're going to put, this is going to be for a long time. Rubber. Screw. 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 The screw you're going to put. On Shabbat, what's your machshava for how long? Forever. Forever. That's the problem. If you put something, if you put something temporary, it's not a problem because after Shabbat you're gonna take it out. Why can't you install the door back after Teva? Because building law. Uh, not because I'm mukta. Right, not because I'm mukta. But if it's not, if it's just like let's say a latch, a latch came off. Like for example, you know, in the shelf, this, this plastic right. came off. And the shelf become loose. Right. Can you put the shelf yeah. back? Yeah. Yes. What's the difference? There, there is, there is, there. We'll see this. We'll see this. It's a, it's a whole different topic. This mama just by the way here. Okay. Depends if there is need a professional person to be involved or not. That's the question. Kamalakov to it. Sadik ben Sadik. Yeah. You can't touch it, it becomes mutsu. No? Why not? <laughs> why? It becomes, because, yeah, I'm saying, why, why? He's right. Because it's like the door that is attached to the wall. Even though it's not so usable. Right. right. It's right now attached to the railing that is attached to the wall. Emotion would do You cannot take out the door just like that. It's not a movable thing. It's attached to the railing for good until it comes out. Got it? Sliding doors are closed. Abotai, it is all Chelek Hey, right now Chelek Himmel. Over there, it's all being discussed at length. Okay, let's continue. We are on page Yud Gimel 13. Number one. Are fruits that are demanded? What's that question? Huh? Everybody stay in Arvi, the gentleman asked. Yeah. We're going to be Arvi, right? Ten people? No, no, no. Have six people? I don't know. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 
Okay. So fruits of where is that correct? Fruits the You know what the ma is? In Eretz Israel, there is an obligation when you have fruits, you have to take ten percent out of them in order to allow people to eat it. Would you give that ten percent to the Kohen? Nowadays you don't give it to anybody. You destroy it nowadays. Like you do the same thing with Afashat Khala. Today burn it or throw it to the garbage. Put it in a bag and put it in the garbage. But originally, the Afashat Khala. <coughs> originally, the Afashat Khala and the Maaser of the fruits, you were supposed to give this Maaser to the Kohen or to the Levi. There is laws about it. Today, since the Kohen and Levi are not holy anymore because they have to have the ashes of the red cow, doesn't allow them, it's not allowed to them to have that food. They are holy to bless you. They are holy to get money for Pidyon Abayin. They are holy to go up in Kat Kohanim. But they are not holy enough to eat the Truma, the donation food. Unless they have ashes of the red cow sprinkled on them. Even for Maaseh? Even for Maaseh. Only Chalat Chutz La'aretz. Rama says Tvul Yom is allowed to have. The Afashat Chalat of Chutz La'aretz. The Kohen is allowed to eat if he'll go to Mikveh that day. What he's allowed to eat? Afashat Chalat. When I bake the Matzah, Every year, I always give it to a Kohen. I do a fashat chala, give it to a Kohen. And the Kohen goes to Beyin Mikveh, that day he eats it. He does double mitzvah with it. He eats a turma plus matzah. Every year you said? And some of them even say bracha. Shal Gideshar, Mishra, Mitzivanu. Al achilat turma. And? Al achilat matzah. No, after we bake, I do a fashat chala. Every time? Yeah, matzah. Matzah. Every year, matzah. when I bake matzah, Which every year, huh? Oh, Which one may you tell me? I said no, last one. Tadir, 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 tadir. So I know. Alachilat tumah probably will be more common. Matzah is only once a week, once a year. You can say bracha. Alachilat tumah can do every time. So if I have a coin who goes to mikveh, I can give him the chala and he can eat. Afashat chala, yeah. In outside Israel, outside Israel. It has to. It has to be Tvul Yom. And not shower. Make it. It has to be. Not only with Matzah, okay? Cool, it's okay. Huh? Not only with Matzah. Right, you just say holler. Yeah, anytime. I just do, I tell you what I do. That's the only time of the year that I bake. Don't tell my wife. The rest of the year, it's on her. But what about when the wife, ah, so you... She you, is, they you can destroy it. They can throw it to the garbage. They don't have to, or burn it. They don't have to look for a coin and give him that piece. But I give not a small piece for the coin. I give him nice matzah. <laughs> it's expensive thing. After hatzot, next year I go to mikvah. Ah, not to your pool. Mikvah. 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 Yes, because you're not doing it with your hands. You're doing it with a broom. We're going to learn. Zemlu no. Zimliano. Biton, yes. We're going to learn that in Zimlia, you cannot even, when you sweep, you're evening out the ground. You know, the first thing before you build, you have to always even out the ground. If the ground is like this, you cannot build a building. You have to bring special people that know how to even out ground. So that's the first step of building. So Chachamim said that it's when a person sweeping, automatically, what is he doing? Inevitable, what is he doing to the ground? He's evening out the ground. That's a problem. On the right level, but whenever he's moving with the broom, the leaves that they dried out over there, or not dried out, doesn't matter, he's not moving it actively, he's moving it. Through a broom. Even Through a broom is called till tul minatza. Even though that's the normal way of doing it? Right. Here is the normal way. It's called till tul minatza. We're going to learn it. These things are going to come up. Okay, so now. Okay, you know what? You can skip that. There's a million years, not going to have it. Let's go to page 14. Number one is raw meat of wild animals and unsalted chicken. Oh. That, that's a common thing. Raw meat of wild animals or chicken, even the unsalted kind, is allowed to be moved since some people will still eat it, even if it's a minority, and you don't have to worry about the blood because it counts as blood of the limbs that did not expel. That's allowed. 
Especially to avoid a loss, it is allowed to move. Kosher, we talk about kosher. Yeah. You know by halakha, a person made shechita, is the meat without shtunamat. You can eat it or no? No. Yeah. I have news for you, Beho. Only when you cook meat, you need to do shtunamak. Salting and, uh, and washing. Wow. But if you don't cook it, and then eat it, rather you just eat it as is, no cooking. Suruyu. You can wash the blood that is on top, wash it off. But the, what the blood that is inside, don't need to do shunamak. Don't need. Because the Torah says only the blood that came out, that saw Olam Azeh, it's forbidden. Mm. If it didn't see Olam Azeh, Tumah didn't rest on it. Exactly. But after the first bite, it comes out. the blood's going to come out. You're going to have to wash it. But let's say you made Rezegi, Bachsbori, small, small pieces. So And then you wash these pieces and you eat it. Healthy, not healthy, I'm not doctor. I'm telling you what he's doing. I had a friend in yeshiva, he used to eat from Argentina. He used to eat ground beef. Botak. That was his the lunch. I, I couldn't look at him doing it, but he used to be with me in the yeshiva. No, he, he used to like it. He says in, in Argentina, it's delicatessen. To have raw ground meat. Ground meat. I don't know about health. I'm here. I'm told you I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what he was doing. So says Rabbi, since there are people in the world that they eat raw meat, guess what? Raw meat on Shabbat, not mukti. At Kilti Chaladzin link freezer, you have over there raw meat. Can you move it in order? You want to take the bread behind it. You want to put the uh, ice cream. Can you move that by Shabbat or no? Yes. Ah, because, but this is per, per, no purpose. You're not going to eat that bread, that meat. Because people, there are people that could have eaten that meat. It's allowed. It's not mukhtar. Even if it's frozen? Even if it's frozen? Raw and frozen. It's frozen is frozen. It doesn't have to be the frost. The fact that it could have, the potential is there. It's not like a uh, not edible thing. It's not like a piece of. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Freezes, yeah. Especially nowadays that most people, what they use the frozen meat for, there is a purpose for it. Ice pack. Whenever people, uh, the kids fall. Not, Always you take are, ice, take ice. You are not moving the frozen meat in order just to move it for stomach. You are moving it to get to the ice cream in the back. Good point. We're going to learn later that Mukte Muhammad Gufo. So it's if it's Mukte, oh, oh. No, no, don't put here. Put over there. I'll tell you one rule with food. Whenever you put the food, anytime I teach, don't ever put the food here. You know why? Because when you put it here, everybody are busy with the food and the whole class destroyed. Whenever a person wants to eat, he goes on the side, like everybody else's attention is here. Whoever wants to eat, he eats there, you know? It's a... Uh, becomes much better for the shoes. So whoever wants to eat, you can welcome, go ahead and eat, huh? Freezing meat, you take it out from the freezer. Frozen meat. Yeah, frozen. You put it, the other stuff you want. Most of the Shabbat, you push it, you want. Yeah, yeah. So why not? Yeah? You're allowed to take the frost, eat it, no problem. Padvadoi, no, he didn't say, he didn't say Padvadoi. He said to take it out and leave it. To put it Padvadoi, it's a different problem. You don't have to, you don't. Rabotai, the laws of Mukte, it's not if I can use it now. Let's say right now, I have a chair. I have 20 chairs here. I'm by myself. Am I going to sit on 20 chairs? No. Can I move those 20 chairs from this corner to the other room? I want to make over here the, the shoe looks good. Can I move them to the other room or no? no. Listen, are you going to sit on this? You by yourself, everybody moved out. Everybody went to vacation. Shabbaton. Are you going to sit on this 20 chairs? No. Why are you moving it there for? It could be set on. Potential. I could have seen it. <coughs> Physically, I will not do that. But I could have. Kasher. It's not Mukti. Just if so, question now. If the if I have some garbage thing, example, I right now have 
a lot of wrappers of candies. The kids made a party of candies, they put a lot of wrappers and the box of tissues underneath that. Can I move the wrappers on Shabbat in order to get to the tissue that is under the, the wrapper? Can I move them on Shabbat or no? Allah says no. What are you going to risk? You have to do but you know, you have to do with your elbow, you have to do with something else. Not directly, there's rules how to bypass the problem, but there's a problem. Chairs, you said you don't, you cannot move chairs also last week. Why not? Why? You said you, it's if it gets dangerous, like, like, like if it, we said that uh, it's for a reason. reason. He's, he's doing it for the Kafir of Shabbat. You're allowed. Talking about oh, hold on. You're talking about chairs or about wrappers? Chairs. 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 We said, even if you don't have a purpose of sitting on them, are they mukte? You're doing it for Kafir of Shabbat. That means you. Good. So you have a reason. You have a reason. But what's the reason? Sitting? No. No. You want to move it, make it. So clean. what do you show? I'm, I'm uh, uh, showing to this gentleman. That what the, when I say something that it is could have be used, it doesn't mean that I will technically use. Even if it's not comfortable to Shabbat. Right. I'll be allowed to move it, just I need a reason to move it. Right. So reason will be a comfort, but it's not mukta, you understand the point? Right, right now your, your son gave you sushi, you don't like this sushi, example. Is it mukta? No. He gave you the piece, of the, the, the roll that you don't like. Somebody else can eat it. Oh. Now, since it's potentially could have been eaten, right. let's say nobody here eats this uh, this type of food. Everybody likes palo. What is this? Raw fish. Sazan bior, right? Shashlif. They don't like raw fish. See, sushi. One guy brought sushi. Is this mukse now or no? No. No mukse. Why? Somebody could have eaten. But who eats chicken? Raw chicken. How about yourself says people could have eaten? Yeah, but not in the water. Just yeah. taking it out of the freezer. Tonight. Uh, right? Tonight, but don't say that it's for tonight. Just take it out. Just take it out and don't put it in water. Just leave it in the room temperature. Is it like cruel to eat this? What? It's not cruel? Cruel? No. Shulchanov says it's allowed. Raw chicken is a bigger problem. Meat. Yeah. 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 Raw chicken. What? Raw chicken no one eats. Yeah, I agree. That's all we know. Over there, you meet okay. again. Burning, then you. Are you? But Shulchan says he could. Who am I to argue with Shulchan Aruch? And you know what's funny? In the days of Shulchan Aruch, people did not eat raw fish. What do we see today? Ba'azur. Delicates. Shulchan Aruch says it says frozen fish or fish. I'm telling you because. <laughs> no, so listen, so listen. Shulchan Aruch says raw meat is not mukte. Raw fish, mukte. Why? These people could eat. I, what is this? People didn't eat. That was the reality they lived in. Is that Mohabi Pasha? Damn, damn. I said Shulchan Aruch this. Zohar, Zohar. Where is the Zohar? Savita Zohar. So can we move raw fish today or no? Yes. yes. It's machloket. It's you have to rely. It's machloket today. It's machloket. Today it's machloket. How? Sushi. 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 Bottom line, sushi is not mukti. Yeah, yeah, there is mahloket. Everything in the Torah is mahloket. Not sushi, like a salmon. It's mahloket. But ba what's the bottom line? Bottom line is not mukti. Locks, locks. Can you move locks? Question. Zohar, Zohar, Chime Shabbat Okay. One day, stay eat like we. Stay eat easy. Потом мясо, потом картошка, капуста, капуста. Я хотел Шабат покушать easy. If you're going to eat it now, you're allowed to. But if you take it Friday night out and hide it in the freezer, in the refrigerator, so your wife will not eat it. Yeah, allowed. Allowed. Mojna. Borir only applies, separation only applies whenever you're moving this, taking it out. And don't eat now. But if you move the top and you take out the bottom in order to eat now, Shulchan Aruch says comparable to apelsin, orange. 
You take out the top, and what do you do? You eat the bottom. Also, How do you do that? Fish bones. You took out the garbage. What's the answer? I'm eating it now. It's a normal way of eating. But let's have guests. Uh, let's say you have guests and your wife peels out five oranges the guest Bechora cannot even finish half an orange and she gives it after so she separated the bad out of the good the guy is going to eat it now or no? no problem Instead of separating the peel, tell your wife, cut the orange. So the peel stays attached to the food. When they buy a bite, what? Eat, huh? but... <laughs> how to how to prepare orange for the guests on Shabbat? You, if you don't know, you make halal Shabbat. You hear if you make kalif, you have to eat it immediately. Same thing with the now you understand how much we have to learn halachot Shabbat. That's the same thing with watermelon, right? Also watermelon, right? Same thing with watermelon, right? There's rules. Yabotai, we're now in Chelek Gimel. You're asking uh, half of the no, class Chelek Hay. Second, uh, second half of the class Chelek Dalet. This, the peel of the orange, uh, watermelon is also. You so Rabbi Yosef water. says that the peel of the orange is not comparable to a peel of watermelon. watermelon because in the orange, when you take it out, you have only garbage. You don't have the watermelon, only garbage. You're always going to leave something edible behind. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not comparable to the orange. See, no? Okay, back to us. Now, says the Zohar Kadosh. Quick question. No, don't. Quick. All the quick. Finish the time. We quickly finished the time already. Okay? So yesterday, what did we learn about the Zohar? How the Yonah is comparable to our Neshama. Ani Sanjo. I put a tracker on you. I know. Whenever the Neshama came, comes down to the world, he has a mission. Bechor, what's the mission of the Neshama in this world? No. Always to see Hashem in every path you're going to go. Everywhere you're going to go. Positive or negative. It's no matter what. There is no never negative. It's Hashem did the most positive thing for my Tikkun. Not for this. I will not improve my Tikkun. I will have to come back again to Tikkun. Now, ah, what you talking about? It says, what are you talking about? You got this problem? Dawai, Habibi, you have to right now travel deep inside Olam Azeh to clean your emotions, your, your negative out of the problem. And a person goes Bahamas thinking that he's going to clean the, the, the suffer, clean the pain. Yes, what did you clean after you came from Bahamas? Only your credit card, the bank account. That's the only thing you clean. <laughs> the only thing you cleaned when you come back from Bahamas, it's only the credit card or your bank account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't clean your pain. You come back, it sometimes even with more pain now. Why? Because you never learned Emunah in Hashem. And yet Sarah tells you, no, Bahamas vacation was not the bond. You should have go to another Gehenna vacation. But that vacation is going to make it. And the person goes deeper and deeper and says, that's what happened to Yonah. Yonah, he says, came down to the world. Yonah was supposed to make a mission. What did Yetzirah make the boat? Runs to the water, goes deeper and deeper inside the water. Says the Zohar. Says when a person makes sins, he thinks I'm going to run away from Hashem. Hashem is not going to find me over there. A person is going to end up giving every single move, every single moment, every single hour. Now, what you said is to cry out. On Yom HaKippurim, Hashem, bitalnu Torah Hashem, I made bitul Torah. But I know what this person, how many hours a day he learned Torah. He used to make cheshbon over there. I could have eat less. I could have sleep less. I could have talk less. He came to a cheshbon one time. That he wasted about six or seven minutes that year. He was crying out with tears unto Hashem. Hashem, bital no Torah Hashem, forgive me. He used to sleep three hours during the night and three hours during the day before the shul. He used to have shul after shul, shul after shul. So people say, Rabbi, how many shulim you have? 
I said, you know, how many shurim Rav Ovadia Yosef had? Just on Shabbat, he had more than seven or eight shurim at the beginning of his life. From place to place, from place to place, from place to place. Seven, eight shurim every Shabbat. A whole Friday, he didn't sleep. Shabbat Zashor, till Motoy Shabbat Avdara, he didn't sleep. Such a person is saying, Hashem, forgive me for Bitul Torah, Hashem. Wow. Over there, I ate a little extra. Over there, I slept a little more. Friday night used to study? Every Friday night, the whole Shabbat he studies. Oh. On Shabbat, the amount of hours that you study oh. amplifies it times 170 million. 100, I think it was 1,000. No, 1,000, but it's high said. Uh, Arizal writes 17,000 ribo. 17,000, 10,000. Wow. That's why, <laughs> that's why, I mean, I made the minyan of here early, 6 o'clock in the morning, Baruch Shama. What's the reason? When a person wakes up early on Shabbat, he gains another two or three hours extra of study Torah. And make your cheshbon and you see how beneficial it is for a person to wake up early on Shabbat, how much benefit is he gaining with the amount of time he's gaining extra on his account. How much you learn and how much extra time you had going home, continue study with your kids, spend more time with your family, and come back there sure to learn. They share the show on top. That's what Amir, I think you should make uh, best efforts to make it to Shabbat over here. I don't One sleep, time. I don't sleep more Friday night anyways. It's uh, all between Hatzalakot and uh, Shanaim Mikra. Uh, so almost, almost every Friday night. Well, almost you say like 6 a.m. Baruch Shaman. Not so bad, me. It's so doable. Still at four o'clock. Okay. Okay. I can do it. Maybe my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> I have to walk here one hour, probably. Yeah, one time, not a big deal. More than one. You made it? Yeah. Work. Wow. Now listen about that to the day. Gezerat dina de kaimat adir kame kuchat al kubaa dina de barnash vi kame. Bedai yu de kamate le spina ve adkar chobo de barnash lit fasale. Kebandi pas barnash al yedad de aise ara ve ba mare makti ve yona yarad el akete a spina ve ishka ve irade. It says whenever Yonah, the, 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 the storm, storm happened in the boat, they woke up Yonah. They said, hello, Yonah, wake up. The boat is about to break. What Yonah is doing, do you know? Drinks alcohol. I said, the heck with this, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Says the Zohar. Do you know what we, we say, wow, what a person, huh? Says the Zohar, that's exactly what we do. It says we run away from the mission of Hashem, and Hashem sends a storm in our life. Suddenly the medicaid is after you. Suddenly DOB gives you a hard time. Suddenly your wife doesn't want to talk to you. Suddenly your mother-in-law says hell to you. And he's saying, Rabbi, my wife used to go to Mikveh now. She tells me I don't want to go Mikveh. Rabbi, my this, my health, my pranasa, my so many problems. Habibi, what's the reason you are going through such a storm? Because you are sleeping, your mission is not fulfilled. You're not coming to show Torah classes, you're not believing Hashem is doing the best for you. You are not doing somebody else a favor, you're not doing chesed with others. This is the mission you came for. And you are sleeping. So what Hashem sent? Sends you a storm. Balagan, Balagan, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brother, your sister, what? Balagan! A person sees all this, what is it Sarah tells him? You need a vacation. What is that? Says the Zohar. He takes another shot of materialism into his system and he thinks, this is going to heal me. Run away to another party, to another vacation. I'm not going to heal your sick hell at the Neshama. The sick Neshama is only going to be healed when you're going to go back to the Creator that gave you this Neshama. By coming to learn Emunah, by coming to learn Torah classes, by coming to Shacharit Min Harvi. Only this type of thing is going to heal your Neshama. Not vacation in the world is going to heal your Neshama. And no drug in the world, no medication, medication in the world. You cannot fix spiritual with physical. All what they say, psychologists, they give you all this medication just to control you, that you should not do crazy things to the society. But it doesn't heal anybody. What heals Heals only learning Torah. Learning Musa, learning Emunah, those are things that heal. 
If you come eat 40 every night with Rabbi Ami, you're going to see how much health of your Ruhani you're going to get. How much? <laughs> Words of Chokhmah comes out of this person. How much? Like this type of shiurim, shiure Torah, shiure halacha, you know on Shabbat you are not lost. Moshno nilzia, eto rabai daska, eto rabai neskazal. Kashda Avram asma programa. You don't live life with doubts. You have clarity. And the neshama is sick whenever, it's blurry about life. He doesn't know what way to go. Oh, it's a Shabbat laws, is it marriage laws, is it Parnassah? What way should I choose in life? No clarity. No clarity, Safek. Safek is Gimatria 240. Gimatria Amalek. Ayn Mim Lamet Kuf 240. Says the Zohar, after they woke up, Shiona, what Yona did? Got drunk. Says that's exactly what we do. Whenever we go through a pain in our lives, what do we think? Let me go out. Let me go vacation. Let me go see this. I'll get healthier like this. It says you're pu putting more materialism into your system will not heal your spiritual problems. It says, even though Hashem sends you so many storms, wake up! What is the Yetzirah makes you do? Take another materialism shot. Yala. Go another vacation. Go another girl. Go another stuyot in your... Go. Rabbi, I think I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to be healthier. Maybe you're going to be bigger. But take care of your body. Take care of your body. But is it going to heal your pain in your heart or no? No. Oh. When your brother-in-law the other day put you down on the wedding, he said, Going to the gym is going to heal that pain? Nowhere. No matter how much biceps you're going to have. It's not going to change the... The, the, the health of your of your of your heart of your emotions. Kad maketiv be maketiv aikra ve lav rava chovel ma rava chovel da yetzerato. He says then who woke up second time? He says Yona, the captain rava chovel. He says and he came to Yona and said he said who is this captain in our life? In our in the in the in the parable in the mashal this is the yetzerato. And he tells you, Malecha Niredam, Kum Kera Beta Hanonim. Remember that song or no? Ben Adam, Malecha Niredam. One time I remember whenever, whenever I read the preparation, prepared myself for Slikot, and we said this line, Ben Adam, Malecha Niredam. Why, 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 why? I was Mamaj burst in tears. How much we are sleeping, Abotai? We are sleeping, Abotai. Yetzirah makes us lose to shoot Torah over here, makes us lose being having nice over there, makes us lose time of upgrading ourselves. And if you check, Behemet, how much time we lose throughout the day, throughout the weeks? A lot. We, Abotai, have to make sure that the shiur is at night, and every one of us have to have a shiur in the mornings set. Mornings, evenings, mornings, evenings. It has to be two pillows of our day. I'm coming to this shoe, I'm coming to that shoe. No matter what's what's there in between. Because if you excuse them once, Yetzirah is going to make you excuse many other times. We should be successful. We should be successful. Amen. 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 Amen.